Well, cholesterol is a what we call risk factor. It's not really a disease, it's a sign of the health of your body in particular. What we're looking at is the sign of, the, of whether or not the blood vessels are healthy. And that's been directly related to a blood test. It's very simple, very inexpensive, very safe. In fact, you can get it for done, done for five or $10, take you just a, a, a few seconds of your time and a small prick in your arm. And this will give you some kind of reflection of what the state of health of your whole body is and uh, the state of health of your arteries. Now, remember, this is only a sign of disease. Nobody dies of high cholesterol. They die of rotten arteries. They die of other diseases related to eating a rich Western diet. You see, the rich Western diet is the common denominator. It's what causes your blood cholesterol to go up. It causes your arteries to be sick. It causes your cells to develop cancer. Develop, just, uh, causes you to develop insulin resistance and diabetes. It's a rich Western diet. And <clears throat> As a consequence of that kind of rich eating, you see certain signs like blood pressure goes up, cholesterol goes up, uric acid goes up, triglycerides go up, et cetera. Now it's easier to look at these signs with a little needle prick in your arm, as opposed to say doing a full autopsy and checking your arteries out. Well, it is a fairly, a fairly reliable uh, indicator of what the state of health is, but it's not 100%. As a matter of fact, I see people with lots of really, really high cholesterols who have perfectly clean arteries. And I see people who have low cholesterols who end up having heart attacks and strokes. But it's not common. The usual association is with the higher the cholesterol, the more heart attacks, more strokes. Now, the focus of attention, unfortunately, has been at getting the number down, getting the sign corrected. Now, we can do that with drugs. I mean, we're doctors. We have chemicals. We can cause the blood cholesterol to go down, but these same efforts do not cause the body to become healthy, do not come, cause the arteries to become unblocked. To do that, you have to fix the underlying problem, which is to fix the food. And then what happens is the tissues get healthier. And along with that, the cholesterol comes down, but not in everybody. Now, as far as looking at the cholesterol numbers go, it's considered that a cholesterol of 150 milligrams per deciliter, which is about four international units or below is ideal. This is based on the Framingham study. And it's actually some work I did about 40 years ago in relationship to cholesterol levels and the Framingham study. We found that, <clears throat> that uh, people who ran cholesterol levels below 150 in Framingham, Massachusetts, which is where the study was done, had a very low risk of, of developing heart problems. And as the cholesterol increased in various populations of people, we saw an increase uh, proportionately in the development of artery problems, but other diseases too, diabetes, cancers, all kinds of problems, uh, multiple sclerosis and so on, are related to higher blood cholesterol levels. Why? Because it's the common denominator is the diet. So what do you do if your cholesterol level is high? Well, most important is you follow a strict diet because that's the underlying factor as far as you getting well and avoiding diseases. What happens to the number is interesting, but you shouldn't rely upon it. It shouldn't make or break your day. I think you should uh, look at yourself and say, you know, I'm doing 100%. I'm eating a high starch, high carbohydrate, low fat, animal product free diet. And that's the best I can do. Well, if that doesn't make you happy, as I mentioned, we've got medications. We've got statin drugs, which are very powerful. You know, I, I can lower your cholesterol 100 points, 200 points. I can make your cholesterol 50 I can make it so low that you don't have enough of uh, the precursors for vitamin D and your sex hormones to produce adequate amounts of hormone. That's right. Your sex hormones come about as a result of metabolizing cholesterol and building sex hormones. So what happens if you artificially lower your blood cholesterol level? Could wreak havoc. Yes, it could. An ideal cholesterol level without medication is below 150 milligrams per deciliter. And you can interpret that as an ideal with medication also. And I have. I've offered people that as their A plus on their report card, getting a blood cholesterol less than 150 milligrams per deciliter. But not everybody's going to be able to achieve that. What we found is that within seven days, and we're talking about nearly 2,000 people we studied, in seven days, the average drop in cholesterol is 22 milligrams per deciliter seven days. You know, that's a, a, a fraction, say three, three quarters of an international unit, but that's still a tremendous drop in cholesterol simply with diet. 
over a year period of time, cholesterol levels remain the same, a reduction of about 20 milligrams per deciliter. So you should put your efforts into solving your problems by dealing with the cause, it's the food. And then secondarily by taking medications. And I realize a lot of what you're going to accomplish in terms of getting new numbers is psychological. You'll feel better about it, but there's nothing wrong with that. You should feel good about your health and you should feel good about the numbers. Just don't make yourself sick doing it by taking medications that have adverse effects. And some of these medications could get very, very costly, particularly the new cholesterol lowering medications. They can cost as much as ten dollars or $12,000 a year to take. It's the food. Doesn't cost you anything. I'm Dr. John McDougall.